If you haven't seen it yet, I'd like you to watch my short video. I think it's only three seconds long where I placed a toy car on top of a basketball and released it from rest. Now, the question here is, how far will it roll before it loses contact and flies off uh, of the ball? It certainly can't make it 90 degrees around and then fall straight down. Because it's going to develop some tangential velocity along the way, um, there's some angle at which it loses contact. Kind of a ridiculous case, right? I don't think we're ever going to drive a miniature car off the top of a basketball. Maybe a more realistic scenario would be a skier on top of a hill that can be modeled as a um, hemispherical. And again, the question is, how far can they travel in terms of an angle before they lose contact and fly off? Well, we can solve this problem largely based on the law of conservation of energy. We'll also have to refer to some of our understanding of Newton's laws. Um, there will be an important free body diagram to consider along the way in this solution. But for now, let's at least do this. Label a starting point, point A, and then the final point is the point at which they lose contact. Now let's think about that. Lose contact, what does that mean? That means the normal force approaches zero. Okay. So the energy at point A has to equal the energy at point B. Let's make a reference level convenient for this problem. I suggest we let height equal zero at the final position for the skier. In that regard, there will be no gravitational potential energy at point B. And this is a problem that doesn't involve any springs or elastic potential energy. So it seems pretty clear what we have going on here. At point A, by virtue of being above the reference level, our skier has gravitational potential energy. And at point B, that's been converted into kinetic energy. All of the gravitational potential energy at point A is exactly equal, joule for joule, to the kinetic energy at point B. Now, if your reference level was down at the bottom of the hill, we would have to add some other gravitational potential energy here. However, we uh, made a wise choice in reference level. So mgh equals 1 half mv squared. Oh, goodness, this is just the very familiar v equals the square root of 2gh. OK. That's as far as we get with the law of conservation of energy. And now we know that some velocity has been developed here. Well, what would a free body diagram look like? Gravity pulls straight down. If there is any contact remaining, if we haven't totally lost contact yet, then there's normal force pointing this way. Are there any other forces? I believe that's it, right? Uh, we're assuming that the skis are very well waxed and the snow is wet, so uh, we're going to ignore force of friction. There we have it. A combination of two forces. Perhaps a little bit of normal force that hasn't reached zero just yet and gravity, which we can break into two components. OK, we're going to break it into a component tangent to the circular path. I might have gone a little overboard with the length of my weight vector. There we go. Okay, so there's a component of gravity tangent, and then there's another component uh, radially pointing, right? Which is really contributes to the centripetal acceleration. Now let's think about the angles involved here. Um, oh yeah, this angle theta has to be the same as this angle theta. Those are alternate interior angles 
right? So this component of the weight pointing toward the center of the circle would be mg cosine theta. So the component of weight tangent to the circular path is mg sine theta. So the way to think about this is this component of gravity is what's uh, increasing the speed of the skier as they follow the curve, where this component is providing the centripetal force. Actually, the centripetal force, the net force, uh, centripetally, would be equal to mg cosine theta minus n. However, we're considering the case where we've lost contact. So actually, there is no normal force here. If point B is the point where the skier just goes off, then the normal force is gone. Centripetal force is mv squared over r. Mass appears on both sides of the equation. OK, so v squared over r is equal to g cosine theta. But we know what v is at that point based on the law of conservation of energy. So if v is the square root of 2gh, v squared is 2gh. 2gh over r equals g cosine theta. Hey, I think a skier on any planet, wait, are there snow-covered hills on any other planets? Well, that's beside the point. Anyway, g cancels out. So 2h over r equals cosine theta. Look what we have here. These right triangles appear a lot in these physics problems, don't they? So here's our angle theta. That's the radius. So is that. And this would be equal to, well, it's the adjacent side of this angle, right? So it would be r cosine theta. Well, if I add the height along with r cosine theta, it should be equal to r. r cosine theta plus h is equal to r. So h is equal to r minus r cosine theta, or h is equal to r times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. This probably looks familiar to some of the algebra work we had in the example of the rope swing. OK, so I get to make a substitution now. And step 5 of our work says 2r times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta divided by r is equal to cosine theta. So the r cancels out. Let's distribute 2 minus 2 cosine theta is equal to cosine theta. Is that mathematically possible? Yeah, sure. Let's just add 2 cosine theta to both sides of the equation. 2 is equal to 3 cosine theta. So cosine theta is equal to 2 thirds. Therefore, theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 2 thirds. Now grab a calculator and see what you get. So the angle is about 48.2 degrees. Well, at this point, you might want to go back and watch the video and see if it appears that this angle is about 48 degrees. Probably difficult to tell. You might want to try it on your own and set your camera on slow-mo and see if that's the case. Anyway, in principle, you can see how, once again, we can use the law of conservation of energy to solve a somewhat real-world situation.